Today I'm going to talk about the max flow min cut theorem. It shows the duality between two seemingly different problems. The theorem states that the maximum value of an ST flow is equal to the minimum capacity over all ST cuts. We will see what that means in a minute, but as some motivation, the theorem directly implies correctness of the Ford Fulkerson algorithm. To continue with the motivation, let's have a quick look at the algorithm. I'm not going to explain the Ford Fulkerson algorithm in detail, so make sure that you have a basic understanding of it before you continue watching. You should be familiar with concepts like the residual graph, flow conservation, and capacity constraints. The important part for this video, though, is the break condition. Note that the algorithm stops when there is no augmenting ST path in the residual graph. The max flow min cut theorem follows from the following theorem, which we will prove in a second. Note that if this statement is true, Ford Fulkerson indeed calculates the max flow if it terminates, as point 3 is exactly the break condition, and the claim is that this is equivalent to point 2. Before we prove the theorem, we must first understand what an ST cut is. An ST cut AB partitions the vertices of a graph such that the source S is in A and the sink T is in B. For example, we could partition this graph as follows. The capacity of an ST cut is the sum of the capacities of all edges that stick out of A. We denote edges sticking out of A by writing E plus of A and edges sticking in by writing E minus. For the capacity of a cut, however, we ignore the edges that stick into A, so in this case it would just be 5 plus 3. The minimum cut is the ST cut with minimum capacity. In this graph, the minimum cut would be as shown with a capacity of 5. Now that we know what an ST cut is, we can prove the theorem. We show the equivalence of the three statements by creating a cycle of implications. First, we show that 1 implies 2, then we show that 2 implies 3, and finally we show that 3 implies 1, which proves the theorem. The first implication is also the trickiest. We assume that there is an ST cut AB, such that the value of F equals the capacity of the cut. We need to derive that then F is a max flow. Note that it's enough to show that all ST cuts create an upper bound for the value of the flow. In other words, the value of any flow can never exceed the value of any cut. If no flow can ever exceed the value of any cut, and by assumption we have a cut that has the value of the flow, then the inequality holds with equality, and F must be a max flow. So let's prove the statement. We start with the value of the flow, which is the sum of the flow on all edges sticking out of the source, minus the sum of the flow on all edges sticking into the source. We can rewrite the sum by looking at all vertices in A. Remember that A contains the source, but not the sink. For each vertex in A, we sum up the flow leaving the vertex minus the flow entering it. Due to the conservation of flow, this term is zero for all vertices except for the source. This really only added a bunch of zeros, but remember that we want to relate the value of the flow to the value of the cut and now we are already talking in terms of one partition of the cut. I've sketched the ST cut AB down here for our next consideration. Note that there are four cases for edges. There are edges with both endpoints in A, edges with both endpoints in B, edges going from A to B, and edges going from B to A. We will rewrite the sum again by thinking about how often each edge shows up in the sum. Edges with both endpoints in A, such as the orange edge VW, will contribute once positively when we look at V, because it sticks out of V, and once negatively for W, because it sticks into W. So the orange edge will show up twice in the sum, once positively and once negatively, which cancels out in the end. Edges with both endpoints in B, such as the blue edge, don't show up in the sum at all. Edges going from A to B will show up once positively in the sum, because the start point is in A. It will not show up negatively because the other endpoint is in B and we only sum over all the vertices in A. Likewise, edges going from B to A will show up once negatively in the sum because the endpoint is in A. It will not show up positively because the start point is in B and again, we only sum over all the vertices in A. Putting all of this together, we saw that edges with both endpoints in A or with both endpoints in B contribute zero to the sum. We can therefore rewrite the sum as a sum of all edges sticking out of A minus the sum of all edges sticking into A. Note that due to the capacity constraints, 
all terms in the left sum are smaller than or equal to the edge's capacity. As flow cannot be negative, each term in the right sum is greater than or equal to zero. So we know that if we omit the right sum and replace the terms in the left sum by the edge's capacity, the resulting term must be greater or equal. This term should look familiar because it is exactly the capacity of the ST cut AB. We have shown that for any flow and any ST cut, the value of the flow is less than or equal to the value of that cut, which proves our first implication. The second implication is that if F is a max flow, the residual graph has no augmenting ST path. However, this implication is trivial by contraposition. If there is an augmenting ST path, then we can use Ford Fulkerson to increase the value of the flow, so F cannot be a max flow. For the last implication, we need to show that if the residual graph has no augmenting ST path, then there is an ST cut whose capacity is equal to the value of the flow. We will construct a cut by putting all the vertices that are reachable from the source in the residual graph into A, and all other vertices into B. Reachable means that we may only take edges with strictly positive residual capacity, or in other words, we may only take edges that are not fully saturated. Note that this partition is indeed an ST cut because by assumption there is no augmenting ST path in the residual graph, so the sink is not reachable from the source. Together with the fact that the source is trivially reachable from itself, we get that the source is in A and the sink is in B. I've sketched out the cut here again. The critical observation is that all edges going from A to B must be saturated because if they weren't, then the endpoint would actually be in A by construction because W1 would be reachable from the source and we put all vertices reachable from the source into A. For all edges going from B to A, the flow must be zero, because if it wasn't, then we would have a reverse edge in the residual graph with strictly positive residual capacity going back from V2 to W2. So again, W2 would be reachable from the source and would therefore be in A, which it isn't. So if we take another look at the inequality from the first implication, where we showed that all flows are bounded above by all cuts, we'll observe that for this particular flow and cut, the inequality holds with equality, as all edges sticking out of A are fully saturated, and all edges sticking into A have zero flow. So we indeed have constructed a cut with capacity equal to the value of the flow. This concludes the proof of the theorem. We have shown that if the residual graph has no augmenting ST path, which is the break condition for the Ford Fulkerson algorithm, the flow is indeed a max flow, which proves the correctness of the algorithm. We have also shown that all flows are bounded above by all cuts, and that if F is a max flow, we can find a cut with capacity equal to the value of the max flow. As no cut may have smaller capacity than any flow, this cut must also be the minimum cut which is what the max flow min cut theorem states.